So last week's video where I installed the new speakers and I talked about my generic TV setup from the TV to the AVR to the Nvidia Shield and my turntable was kind of a prerequisite for what I wanted to do this week in this video where I really want to focus on the Nvidia Shield, talk about the apps that I'm using, talk about how I have it set up, talk about it, how I actually use the Nvidia Shield and how it's one of my most used devices in the house on a regular basis. And in a general sense, talk praises about how great the Nvidia Shield is because I absolutely love this thing. I picked one up last year and it has been such a big difference compared to what I was using previously. And we'll go over that too. So without further ado, let's get the Nvidia Shield on. So let's quickly talk about the Shield itself first. So I have the 2019 Shield Pro model, which is the P2897. This has the upgraded Tegra X1 Plus chip with three gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage. It has two USB-A 3.0 ports. It has HDMI 2.0B. So unfortunately, no HDMI 2.1. It has a gigabit inter, uh, ethernet port, and it also has 802.11ac uh, Wi-Fi, which is the version before Wi-Fi 6. It has Bluetooth 5.0 plus LE. It has the newer version of the remote. It is able to do max playback, 4K 60 FPS, and it has the newer AI upscaling, HDR10 Dolby Vision, and the decode pass-through, which is all part of that newer Tegra X1 Plus chip. Now, something that's super impressive is that even though this device is over four years old now, they just released an update earlier this year, which is super impressive. This has got to be one of the longest supported Android devices of a long time. I am overall extremely impressed with the Nvidia Shield Pro. It has been such a big upgrade from the Google TV. I've been really enjoying kind of playing around with it and kind of customizing it to my liking. So let's quickly talk about a few of the settings that I have set up. So for AI upscaling, I'm just doing enhanced. I'm not doing the AI enhanced. I tried it out a little bit and I didn't see any major benefits. I saw some weird artifacting that was happening and stuff that I didn't really like. So I've just switched it back to the enhanced and I haven't really done much at all since then. I have the detail enhancement set to low and the settings have worked out very well for me as of the last you know four or five months that I've been using it pretty heavily. I have the Shield plugged in via Ethernet. Again, as I mentioned, the Shield does not have Wi-Fi 6 or anything like that. So having it plugged in to Ethernet, one, gives it the best speeds available, but also just gives it the best stability, which is really important. And I have the ability to plug it in via Ethernet, so why not? Now, in terms of the display and sound, I have it set for the maximum resolution and frame rate that it supports. I also have the Dolby Vision set to on. And then as I mentioned in my previous video, I have CEC enabled so that I'm only using one remote at a time. Um, the remote that comes with the Nvidia Shield Pro is really nice. It has a very unique shape because it's triangular, but it fits really nice in the hand. Overall, it's a nice remote. Some of the buttons are a little overly sensitive, but we'll go over that in a second when I talk about one of the apps. Overall, I like the remote. I think the only thing that would make this remote better is if it had something like the LG's Magic Remote where you could use it like a pointer. That would be amazing. If Nvidia ever makes another Shield product, they should definitely do that with the motion controls because having an actual pointer on screen, such a huge game changer in terms of having these big TVs and doing a lot more stuff on them like you do within an Android device like the Nvidia Shield Pro. But yeah, power, volume, everything, I have it set through CEC. I talk about it in my video from last week, but I kind of try to control as much as I can through the AVR in terms of the video and audio and all that fun stuff. Anything that goes through the TV in terms of audio is all gonna come through the AVR as well. So if I plug anything directly into the TV, it'll still get played audio-wise through the AVR. It's a pretty good setup. I'm overall pretty happy with it. CEC isn't perfect though, and if you've asked anybody who's ever used it, there's always going to be some kind of quirk or something that doesn't really go the way that you want it to. For example, we've been having a lot of power outages lately due to one of the big ice storms that just happened, and every time the power came back on, it would turn on my shield, which would then turn on my TV. And this TV is an OLED, so you don't want it to be sitting on a static image for too long, but if I wasn't home, the TV would have just been on. So luckily, I have my server that tells me when the power goes out and comes back on 
so that I would just remote into my home network and then make sure to turn off my TV remotely using the network. So at least I have that benefit, but a lot of people don't. So stuff like that happens, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. If you are curious about any particular settings that I'm using in my NVIDIA Shield, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'm more than happy to let you know. Um, it's been fun. I've been talking with, again, the same person I mentioned in the last video. We've been talking a lot about our NVIDIA Shield Pros, the settings that we're using, CEC, all that kind of stuff. It's been a lot of fun to kind of share our experiences, talk about things that are working for us versus things that are not. It's, it's just nice to kind of share that kind of information back and forth. Now, here is my home screen. I am using a non-standard launcher for my NVIDIA Shield Pro. I am actually using something called Projectivity Launcher. I'm planning on doing an entirely dedicated video on Projectivity, all of the settings that I have set up for it, how I've kind of set up everything to make it look the way I want it to, but that is what's doing the wallpaper right now. That's what's gonna be doing all of the stuff when we go through it. So if you do wanna see how I have Projectivity set up, what it is, how it operates, how to set it up properly, Get subscribed because I will be doing a video on that either next weekend or the weekend after that. So get subscribed so that you don't miss that video. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the apps that I use on a regular basis and ones that I think are pretty important to my day-to-day -day TV experience. So the first one that we're gonna see highlighted here is called SmartTube. And SmartTube is, you can see by the icon, is a YouTube alternative app. What it does is it allows native ad blocking built into the app as well as sponsor block and a few other features. It is such a great application. I really do love it. It has been kind of my thing ever since I canceled my YouTube premium once they upped the prices again. And having sponsor block with the way that I, like a lot of the channels that I watch where they're just throwing ads and ads and ads integrated into their videos constantly makes it a much more enjoyable viewing experience and I really do like it. So I highly suggest you check out SmartTube. I will leave links for all of the apps that I talk about in the description so you can go ahead and check them out for yourself. Now, I also have Jellyfin and I have Plex all the way down here. Now, if you don't know what Jellyfin and Plex are, they are locally hosted media servers that you can host. You can put all of your ripped DVDs and your own personal media files, music, videos, all that kind of stuff. You can put them on there and you can view them on your TVs. I use this for all of my movie watching and stuff like that. I primarily use Jellyfin when I'm at home because I have a lot less issues with it. Plex has been very picky and finicky lately, but I do have Plex running off the same media folders because Plex is just a lot easier to share with people that are not on the network, especially with people that are not very technically savvy. Um, so I have Plex for all of my family that uses my media server as well. Now I have Spotify, nothing too fancy there. And for my Twitch, I'm also using an alternative client for Twitch, and I'm using something called Smart TV Client for Twitch. So what Smart TV Client for Twitch allows you to do is again, it has built-in ad blocking, which is really, really handy on Twitch, because Twitch also is just pumping the ads through like crazy. It has a not as great of an interface as I would like. I was using another app before called Sound TV, but unfortunately that one hasn't been updated in quite a while. So a lot of the features on it started breaking and the smart TV client has been working pretty well. I don't watch Twitch on my TV all too often. I'll do it when my DJ friends are doing a set um, and I'm doing stuff around the kitchen or I'll do it if I'm watching, you know, a longer stream and I just kind of want to chill out like Mr. Sark or APL or one of those guys. And this app just works extremely well. It's very lightweight. It doesn't require uh, too much. It doesn't lag. It is very simple in terms of its UI and I'm able to kind of do all the things that I need to. I updated it, it logged me out, so I do have to log back in, but it's a very overall, as you can see here, a very simple UI, nothing too crazy. It kind of looks a little old, but it works very well for my purposes. Now, Moonlight is another app that I use, and I plan on doing a dedicated video on Moonlight, but this allows me to stream all my games from my computer to my TV, so when I do want to do a little bit of couch gaming and kind of relax, this allows me to do it. Again, I am planning on doing a video for this. If you're interested in that video, please leave a comment down below and I will do an entire dedicated video on this, going through the setup, how I'm using it, showcase how I'm using it, the latency, all that fun stuff, but it has been a really great solution and I'm really liking it so far. 
It's been a lot better for me than the integrated GeForce Now because you can do it across a whole bunch of things and it doesn't have to, doesn't require you to have an NVIDIA GPU if you don't want to. So definitely suggest checking out Moonlight. Now I have a few of the other services that I don't personally pay for, but I have accounts of people that pay for them because my friends are nice to me. So I have Disney Plus and Prime Video. I have Five, which is just my TV provider. I get TV for free with my internet, so that's why I have that. I have Streamio because I have been checking out a few things using Streamio. It's just something that I'm tinkering around with. I'm not using it really much at all as of right now, but it's there. And then I have Unify Protect so that I can see my cameras that I have in my Unify network on my TV. I can creep on my family when they decide to come over. I know when people are gonna be here, just stuff like that. So these are the main apps that I use on a regular basis. So next up are the rest of the apps that I use that aren't maybe directly into interacted with very often, but I do use them and they are extremely handy. Aerial Dream and Aerial Views here are just wallpaper apps that I can use with my launcher or I can use them to override the default Google wallpaper that happens when you're inactive uh, and the kind of NVIDIA Shield Pro goes into the semi-sleep where it has the wallpapers. What these applications do for the most part is they're grabbing from Apple's Aerial Collections, which is actually the wallpaper that you see right behind here. This is one of the ISS Aerial Collection videos that I really do enjoy. And these allow you to kind of override default wallpapers, which is kind of cool. Next up we have CX File Explorer. I like CX File Explorer a lot more than the default NVIDIA Shield File Explorer. It works really, really well. We've, we've launched in here and I'm, it's actually currently accessing my node server. So I can go ahead and access a bunch of stuff directly from there, which is super handy. Um, we can go ahead and back out of there. You can set it up so that you can access your NVIDIA Shield from a computer. So it's really easy to do some quick file transfers, which is really nice. And then you can also set up things like uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, all that fun stuff, which is really cool. Really do enjoy it. Overall, the UI is a lot better than the default one. It works pretty well. And I wish the NVIDIA Shield had a way to just completely stop using the default one, because for some reason I have so many issues with the default file explorer, but this one works really well for when I do need to use it. The next noteworthy app is called Button Remapper. Now, Button Remapper is extremely handy. As I mentioned, with this remote, the Netflix button is extremely sensitive. Like, you barely need to touch it for it to work. So what I've done is I've actually remapped this so that the single press isn't mapped to anything right now. You have to actually long press it or double press it for it to do something. So if I double press it, it will launch SmartTube for me. And if I long press it, it will launch Jellyfin for me, which is really nice. Really do like that. Um, this app works extremely well for me. I haven't had any issues with it. It hasn't backed out any of the remappings that I've done. Didn't cost me anything. Highly suggested if you have the NVIDIA Shield Pro and you wanna remap any of the buttons on the remote. And last up, we have Downloader. Downloader is used for a lot of different purposes, but for me specifically, it is used to download the apps that are not available on the Play Store, either from their GitHubs or from a specific download page that the developer has set up. This is used for things like SmartTube, like the uh, Smart TV client that I use for Twitch. It's just overall, a very handy tool. I use it to download a bunch of updates. I actually use it for productivity as well to get the new builds that are uploaded to GitHub before they are actually uploaded to the Play Store because he kind of uses that as a air gap where he tests out new features on the GitHub and then once everything is solid and people haven't had any issues, then he passes it over to the Play Store. So overall, Downloader is pretty great. If you've tried to download any third-party applications on your NVIDIA Shield. This is probably the app that you've been using for that. It's extremely common and it's a very handy tool. And honestly, that's for the most part it. If there's any apps that you use on your NVIDIA Shield or your Android TV that you really do like that I haven't talked about or that I don't have online, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what it does. I really do enjoy discovering new apps, new programs, stuff that'll make my life easier, things that'll just overall improve my experiences. Really do like them. Projectivity has been a huge one. And again, get subscribed if you do wanna see the video where I talk about all that setup. It has really improved the layout 
of the NVIDIA Shield Pro's launcher because the NVIDIA Shield has the older version of Google TV's launcher, which is both good and bad. It just looks a little bit outdated. It doesn't have nearly as many ads on it, but now I don't have any ads on my home screen, which is really nice. I only have the stuff that I want to see. I was able to fully customize it. Really do like that. So do check into that video if you are interested. Projectivity is pretty sweet. Now, with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, whether it's on the contents of the video, overall quality of the video, things you'd like, me see, you'd like to see me do in the future, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to get to them all as quick as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any other videos relating to the stuff I've got set up in my house, the new house as a whole, you can check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.